Next, Philip's going to come up. Uh, and he's going to talk about the, the deterioration, the, the Midwest Bridge Preservation uh, Partnership's deterioration model pooled fund study results. I am Philip Meinl uh, from Wisconsin. Um, I got handed uh, this project from Bill Oliva, if some of you know Bill. Uh, so he did a lot of the legwork in bringing everybody together uh, on this project, and um, it was a great great opportunity uh, for the Midwest states uh, to pool their resources and work together. So these are the states that uh, were involved. Um, and then, yeah, I also want to take this time to say thank you to everyone who was involved on this project. There was, there was a lot of work. This has been a two-year project that's gone on for three years. Um, so there's a lot of work, a lot of uh, conversations need to be had uh, to talk through uh, a lot of different uh, aspects of the data. Uh, principal investigator now uh, is WSP. Uh, they weren't when they began the project, but through a merger, they're WSP now. Um, so yeah, the, the main the main point here is is pooling our resources uh, and historic data um, to develop reliable deterioration curves, both for component NBI and for uh, ASHDO elements. Uh, we really wanted to improve the accuracy uh, of our, our various bridge management systems and make this um, immediately uh, available for use uh, in whatever, whatever system we're using. So this is a list of, of tasks uh, in the project. Uh, so starting off with your uh, traditional literature review, um, gathering a raw data set of, of all of our inspection data, inventory data, policies, uh, turning that into an analysis data set, something we could process, uh, turn into models, and then model estimation, uh, and then uh, review, uh, both statistically and um, with expert review. And like any research project, it looks, looks great. We'll just go around this circle and, and be done. Uh, <laughs> but it turned out, to, okay, we get a little ways into the process, we gotta circle back. Uh, get a little bit further in the process, circle back again, um, and again. Uh, and that's what happened over this, this three-year cycle. As we dove into different areas uh, of the data, we needed to further clarify, further connect different tables in the database, uh, and so on. So for the, the literature review, um, there's a lot of background on deterioration curves. I'm going to go over this pretty quick. I've got a lot of slides. Ultimately, uh, really, really geared towards uh, the Markov models. It seems to be industry standard. And then here's some different ways uh, that Markov model can be corrected to, to better uh, match reality uh, with the viable factor. Uh, there's different protection factors, environmental factors, et cetera. So you can see how that changes the, the shape of the curve. Here's a list of some other uh, uh, estimation models that are out there. Uh, a lot of them were pulled in into this study. Getting into the, the raw data set, gathering data, this is a list of, of some of the things that we're after. Um, looking at not only the, the data, the raw data, uh, but also trying to collect inspection practices, uh, compare those inspection practices, make sure we're comparing apples to apples, then uh, get into um, the actual inspection data, inventory data to go along with that, so we could we could make correlations uh, based on those inventory values. Uh, we collected agency-defined elements, uh, non-destructive evaluation data, construction history data, uh, and then along with that, construction policies and maintenance policies, uh, so we could understand that data. Uh, then if we had any existing deterioration curves, just seeing where everybody was starting from, uh, and then uh, element environments, and obviously GIS coordinates. Here's a breakdown of that, that raw data. So 220,000 bridges uh, between the, the states that were, were involved. Um, almost 1.8 million routine inspections for as far as NBI values go. Um, and then 387,000 uh, routine inspections with ASHTO elements. Uh, and this was, this was really the focus of the study that, you know, when Wisconsin 
dove into our our optimizer and and dove into our deterioration curves we're like okay we have a very limited data set of ashto element data and so bringing all these states together really helped us uh, maximize uh, what we could do and then almost 100,000 uh, routine inspections with ashto element defects uh, about 200,000 construction activity entries, uh, about 9,000 non-destructive evaluation inspections, and almost 400 ADEs among the states. So we used a two-step gathering approach, you know, put out a data request, uh, you know, got back responses, but the real key, key here is taking the time to understand that data, not just grabbing it and dumping it into uh, a, another database and processing it. So keeping in mind the objective is to work from the, the, element, deterior, the element data and get to those deterioration curves uh, as cleanly as possible. So the analysis data set, here's some of the data cleaning that we went through, just reformatting the data, get it uh, into a MySQL format, uh, avoiding duplicate uh, GUIDs, uh, reclassifying NBA, uh, non-NBE into NBE elements, um, linking NBI submittal data to the element inspection, element inspection data so that we pulled from the FHW site and then we also incorporated uh, data tables from, from the states so there was a little bit of, to do to connect those two. Uh, and then adding wearing surface grouping data. Uh, so we wanted to get down to the wearing surface level for deterioration and not all states collected specific ADEs for their wearing surfaces, so we had to do some uh, acrobatics to make that, that, make that connection. Uh, for the analysis data set, really focused on tables that were geared towards uh, BRM, making sure a lot of states use uh, AstroWare BRM. Uh, so we made sure the tables were uh, very similar to that, uh, that format. Uh, part of the project was developing data governance. So Wisconsin is is holding the uh, official data set, the official um, research results, but they are available to every state that participated, and every state will have have access to that data going forward. And then we'll also so we're retaining that for any future projects. So we've done a lot of a lot of work here laying the foundation. There's a lot of different uh, other research opportunities that could come from this, this project. So just maintaining that data and making that accessible and able to be updated over time. So the process for deterioration curves, um, the procedure, refining that data set, creating uh, pairs of inspections using SQL, incorporating the work activities from the states, uh, stratifying that data, connecting inventory values to these inspection pairs uh, to know what we were looking at, seeing if we could break it out in different ways. Uh, and then the, the final uh, product was uh, Excel spreadsheets for each of these models. We broke it up into different tiers so that we could uh, kind of gauge the, the, the progress as we went. Uh, so we started at a very high level with, with tier one, uh, looking at component MBI ratings. Um, but then also we got into uh, National Bridge Element, uh, RC Deck, and RC Slab right away, uh, since those were, you know, top priority for for preservation for our structures. Uh, yeah, and we also looked at, you know, kind of went off on a tangent there with RC Deck after major preservation. Uh, tier two is looking at more of the 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 smaller elements. Um, looking at wearing surfaces in particular, then joints, paint, and, and defect progression, and substructure element. Sorry, rushing through. Uh, three basic formats uh, for deterioration. Uh, we have the, the Markov model as the base and the Weibull factor to adjust uh, based on age uh, and maximum likelihood, uh, and then action of uh, effectiveness uh, played into how we incorporated the construction history. So there wasn't, among the states, there wasn't uh, good coverage with construction history for all of the, the structures, so we had to do kind of a modification factor. Here's some cuts of the, uh, the results uh, that I just pulled out of there. Here, sorry, it's a little small. I'm even having trouble reading it up here. Here's just looking at the, the NBI deterioration, uh, so breaking it up 
with Dex, Super Sub, and Culvert. Um, for our NBI, uh, we had such a large data set of NBI uh, inspection pairs that we took a random sampling of, of all those that were available, but we did make sure that they were state-owned structures, uh, that they had uh, traffic on them, and that they were non-buried structures. Here's uh, a breakout. So since we pulled in some of those inventory values, we could connect that to the inspection pairs, and this is just a breakout of, of rebar type. The green line uh, on the top is epoxy-coated rebar in the deck uh, component, and the black line is, is black bar. Here's uh, superstructure MBI deterioration uh, based on span type. So you got pre-stressed uh, girders on the top there in gray, uh, reinforced concrete slab in red, and steel girders in blue. So there's opportunities to, to break it out uh, based on what you're looking at specifically for your structure. Here's uh, reinforced concrete slab ratings. Um, deck NBI compared to superstructure NBI. So ideally, these would be the same curve with, with how we, we rate them in the field, uh, but there's a slight difference there. Here is um, some tables of results uh, for RC deck. So the Markov model is based on median transition times, uh, and that's what a lot of these tables uh, uh, contain. Um, here you can see, you know, you can break it out based on like construction era and traffic volume. Uh, you can see different rates um, associated with those those uh, factors. And then on the on the right, uh, there uh, the deterioration is broken out by individual state. And you can see the benefit of pooling all of our data together. Some states, you know, have have very different numbers uh, from others. Uh, but pooling our, our data together uh, helps, helps average those curves. So for the RC deck element, uh, we were uh, able to calculate a viable factor of 1.58 and using maximum likely, likelihood and uh, age uh, of the deck. So here's kind of a, uh, a graph showing all the different data points. And here's just uh, the transition of just the average I average it in blue, and then the what the uh, final final viable factor is uh, in the in the orange. So for RC slab element, here's here's a graph. Um, so recommended RC deck uh, and RC slab. So you can see uh, RC slab element um, in in yellow on the top, and RC deck in in blue at the bottom. And it is nice that our element data also matches our, our NBI comparison of, of deck and slab. So there you have a little uh, validation between component ratings and, and elements. Here's RC deck um, element deterioration after major preservation. So um, this is still a, a do nothing curve essentially, but it shows some residual effect uh, on RC deck element by performing preservation action. Here's a graph showing uh, effective wearing surface on the deck element deterioration. Uh, so you, the, the top line there in orange is a deck with a wearing surface. Uh, the gray is uh, an unprotected deck. And then the yellow is just the deterioration of the wearing surface itself. And here's a table showing the, the deterioration of individual wearing surfaces. So we, part of the, the wearing surface groupings that we came up with, uh, they utilized uh, agency-defined elements for wearing surface surfaces wherever they were available, but uh, in cases where they were not, we, we pulled from NBI 108 item and then translated to um, the wearing surface types. And you would think it would just be all the same translation, but for different states there were different variances in that translation based on based on how we actually perform this work. So here I, I just plotted all the different types of wearing surfaces uh, and their straight Markov uh, deterioration from the study. So here you can see all the variances between uh, asphalt, thin polymer overlay, concrete overlay, um, asphalt without a membrane, uh, and then no 
bare wearing surface slash sealed concrete. That was just our, our bare deck, essentially. And in Wisconsin, we break that out as a separate wearing surface. And so we, we ended up creating a, a wearing surface group to account for that as well. Uh, we were able to generate a viable factor for wearing surfaces. Unfortunately, we had to use one viable factor for all wearing surfaces. So that uh, factor was 2.24, and here you can see the change in the deterioration curve when that viable factor is applied. Then moving on to, uh, I guess we're in tier two now already with wearing surfaces. Um, sorry, my emphasis was on the wearing surfaces. I really wanted uh, refined curves for those. Um, but also part of tier two were, were, was joint deterioration. Uh, here you can see a table of transition times for different types of joints. Uh, the joint deterioration was a, a bit faster than, than we expected. Also in tier two, uh, we looked at delamination defect development. Uh, so we, we were a little bit limited in, in our data here. Uh, only six agencies recorded defects. Um, so there was also a vast majority of decks without DLAMs. Um, I, sorry, I should back up. So here we decided to look at um, what was uh, the effect of cracking in a deck and how that affected the development of delaminations that developed after, after that cracking. So it's a little bit confusing. There's a, there's a defect. 1130 column on the left there of that table, and there's there's um, a factor in there, uh, and it's basically a progression of increased cracking. Um, you can read about more in the report. I don't think I can do it justice here, um, but essentially, uh, for the amount of cracking, I I just took an example. So if it's uh, CS2 cracking. Up to 1.0 means that the total quantity of defect 1130 is about, you know, less than 6% of the total element quantity. And then um, you can see the likelihood uh, or the transition time of, of 30, 30 years about. And then if you move to that, that next category up, up to 0.98, if it's all CS2 cracking, then that's about, you know, if you have six to 60% of your deck has cracking in it, um, then you can see you're twice as likely to develop uh, delaminations. So it, interesting work there. Um, there's not a bridge man management system currently that uh, can use that information, um, but I think it's, it's something we, we can look at more in detail in the future. Tier two also looked at uh, paint, paint system defects. Um, we focused on the effects of paint on the actual element that it was it was coating, um, and so there was a, a correlation again using the same um, uh, indexed factor to associate paint condition with with that underlying element, um, and then obviously paint has a big big impact on your corrosion. Tier two for um, substructures. Uh, here at the table on the, the left, you can see broken out by, by type of substructure. Um, you can see columns has a significantly different uh, deterioration rates than the others. Uh, we think that's more attributed to how we're recording that data as, as columns in each rather than by linear foot or something more granular. So. And then we also uh, broke those, those curves out by ADT uh, and construction era. Tier three scope focused on identifying agency defined elements, uh, figuring out which, which elements were kind of best, best practice for the states, uh, provide uh, detailed instructions for data collection, gathering, formatting, um, determine the status of NDE efforts uh, in in each of these, in each of the states, uh, and then uh, NDE translation to concrete bridge deck inspections. Table here shows which states collect defect, defects, which ones don't. Um, wearing surface ADEs were uh, very helpful uh, in this research. Uh, other ADE categories include steel protective coatings, wing walls, head walls, um, sorry, and girder ends.
So there wasn't a lot of uh, NDE data available. Um, not very many systematic uh, programs to collect NDE among the states. Uh, here is just uh, a table of how Wisconsin uh, converts NDE uh, data to a specific condition, condi condition states for uh, wearing surfaces. Yeah, most NDE, NDE is limited uh, to as, as needed in most states. Um, and then here's just another breakout of, of NDE in Wisconsin. So most of that data came from Wisconsin. Uh, main recommendations from tier three uh, to have uniform way of assessing a deck condition. So there's a lot of different variations uh, between the states uh, combining top and bottom versus breaking it out top and bottom, uh, breaking it out wearing surface versus undersided deck. Uh, and then formatting and recording uh, the treatment or construction history uh, for structures will also be very helpful uh, in the future. We talked about implementation. Um, we were able to uh, have a meeting at um, AstroWare BRM user group meeting. Uh, so here I've got a, a graph from BRM just showing the, uh, the effects of, of a protected deck and, and a wearing surface. Um, so a lot of the implementation was geared towards, towards BRM users because that was the uh, majority of users. Some results, uh, like I said previously, are, are too advanced for the, the software right now, uh, but we had some ideas coming out of that meeting about particular enhancements in order to utilize more of uh, this research project. The models can be, can be stratified. You can look at a bunch of different inventory factors related to your structures. You just have to be careful that you don't narrow it down to a, a data set that's too small to be uh, valid. Uh, and then the, the data can be updated. So we collected all the SQL statements for generating the tables, cleaning the, the, the data tables. So if we want to go back, relook at things, collect more data, add that to the, da the data, rerun it, we can. Uh, additional models can be generated from for additional elements. So we didn't we didn't cover the whole gambit of all ASHTO elements, but it uh, should be fairly easy to go back and, and pick out uh, inspection pairs for a particular element and generate the models. Uh, and then within our our BMS, um, yeah, we're in the process right now. Individual individual states are going through the process of comparing. Uh, the new deterioration curves to what they had in their bridge management system previously. And I haven't heard of any of them blowing up yet. So it's a good sign. Future research, um, up, obviously updating and refining the deterioration models. Um, additional data cleaning efforts could be done. Uh, it, it's, it's one thing to talk about our data very high level. Um, and like, oh yeah, I think we're on the same page. And then you dive into our different databases and it's like, whoa, whoa, what are you guys doing here? Or what, it, you know, this is, you know, takes additional explanation of, oh yeah, we do this, but in this situation it's different and yeah. Having all those conversations, I, I think it's good to, to keep those conversations going among the states. Yeah, so we could work on improved understanding between the differences uh, in our agencies, improve the quality and consistency of our construction activity data. Uh, it was, we, th we thought going into it like, hey, we have all this construction data, it'd be nice to just bring that right into the research, uh, but there were just too many holes in it to make, make good use. So if we can do a better job of collecting that construction data, it'll help with future projects. Further development of, of detail, defect data, associated models, uh, and then best practice guidance and impl implementation. That's it, any questions? Now, you know, I, I, of course I'm a bridge management system guy, so, and this is what we input into the bridge management system, so I'm excited, but um, what is the deliverable gonna, deliverable gonna be, a report, or is it also gonna have a tool? So there's a report uh, that will be published. Uh, it goes through, you know, it, the, the report's pretty nice because the, the front part of it's very, very easy to read, very easy to understand. And then there's a lot of appendices with all the detail uh, about how to update and such. But uh, then there's also uh, spreadsheets for each one of those deterioration models that uh, all the states have uh, available to them and you can go through and you can, you can tweak. So uh, a lot of pivot tables in there. So you can select uh, inventory values that are significant that are significant to you 
and basically customize your models to what is important for your agency. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.